Hello everybody and welcome to the Castle Hall Baptist Church Messy Church for May. I'm Isaac um, and today I'm going to be talking to you guys all about a book, uh, a story from the book of Acts, which is in the Bible. It's after Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. So Matthew, Mark, Luke and John are the Gospels and they talk about who Jesus was and what he came to do and they told him how he died and he rose again and then he ascended up into heaven. But during his time he made 12 really close friends that he told to go out and then teach everybody about what Jesus had come to do. And so one of these people was called Philip. Now, Philip had been wandering around. He'd been teaching people about who Jesus was in the, in the neighboring towns and cities and, and in big gathering places. And he was telling people about what Jesus was and what he came to do. And this is one of those events of when he came to tell someone about Jesus. Um, so I'm going to read this today. It's from Acts chapter 8, and it's the verse 26. And it's called Philip, 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 Philip and the Ethiopian. And so I'm going to read this for you now. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road, that goes from Jerusalem to Gaza. And so he started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, and it was important, he was an important official in charge of the treasury of the Kanadake, which means the queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet, which is one of the books from the Old Testament. The spirit told Philip, Go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you're reading? Philip asked him. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. This is the passage of scripture the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so did he not open his mouth. In his humiliation he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, Please, who is this prophet talking about, himself or somebody else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they travelled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What can stand in the way of my being baptised? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptised him. When they came out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again. But he went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared at Azotus and had travelled about preaching the Gospels in the towns until he reached Caesarea. Wow, what a story. And it's a really, really cool story because it shows a lot of different things. We're going to break it down into three points. So the first point we're going to make today is that Philip was listening to and was led by God. And so he was doing what God had told Jesus had told him to do. And he was going out and was preaching the word. He was telling people about Jesus. And he had such a relationship with him that he was able to hear from the Holy Spirit, which directed him to go on that road down towards Gaza. Uh, because he had listened to him, uh, he was able to uh, hear him tell him to go and stand and run alongside of the eunuch that was in his chariot. Now, this chariot would have been uh, quite an important person. He probably... Not many people had chariots in those days, only the really popular people, the really fancy people. And so Philip would have probably looked a little bit crazy running up beside this, this, uh, this rather wealthy person. But he heard that he was reading from the book of Isaiah. Now, the book of Isaiah was, at this time, from the verse we were reading, was talking about how Jesus was going to be killed. And this was written a long, long, long time before Jesus actually came. And so... The, the eunuch didn't quite understand what was going on. Uh, he, he knew what the words were saying, but he didn't understand what they meant. And so Philip was able to go and start telling him and teaching him. And so that comes on to our second point. So Philip was teaching and explaining the scripture to other people. And God wants us to go out and spread that good word. He wants us to go out and teach people. He wants us to go out and tell us other people how great Jesus is and was. Because he's still alive today. And so... As a result, we come to number point number three. The Ethiopian goes from knowing what the words said, but really understanding what they meant. And so he was filled with, I, I imagine, awe and wonder and, and joy because he, he finally knew that his sins and all that he'd done wrong was now forgiven because of what Jesus came to do. Now, this story really sums up that the Bible is meant for everybody. It doesn't just mean that those who were 1,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago, that kind of knew Jesus. It wasn't just for them. It wasn't just for those who were Jewish. It was for everyone. Everyone is welcome to receive the gift that is Jesus. And 
that is so important because Jesus is for everyone. The other thing is when we follow God and when we listen to God and we do what God says, amazing things start to happen. Weird things start to happen. How are we supposed to know what we're supposed to do? But we can be guided by God who does has a has, does have a plan and he wants us to go out and do it. And so today we're looking at this story and, I, and we're going to do some craft around that so we can help learn. We're going to look at the uh, hopefully the, the chariots and then... Uh, what it means to be a follower of Jesus. So thank you for, for joining us. We're going to pray quickly, and then hopefully you'll find in the in the comment section a uh, another link to a, a document which has some crafts that you guys can do at home. So if you follow the link uh, and in the description, uh, hopefully you'll be able to find your way to the craft sheet that we have uh, linked you to that you guys can do at home. So let's pray. Yeah, dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much that you love and care for us, Lord. Lord, thank you that you keep us safe even though uh, things sometimes go wrong. Lord, help us to seek you and to be courageous in how we uh, respond to your word, Lord. Help us to have the courage to speak out uh, for your name to others who do not know you yet, but are hungry and, and want to know you or need to know you, Lord. Lord, thank you for today and thank you for Messy Church as we are still able to celebrate you all together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, I hope you have learned something today. Please go out and check out those uh, crafts. And then, you know what, even take pictures of them and then send it back to the page and we can post them. Um, leave your faces out, but you can put your name there and we can, we can show everyone what everyone's been doing. But thank you so much. We will uh, see you again, hopefully, very, very shortly. Goodbye.